Hello, and welcome to the Casino Tears podcast. I'm one of your hosts, 10 Ton is number one, and joining me as my co-host is the one and only Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps. If you want more info on our show, please visit our page at casinotears.com. On this week's show, we discuss tiptoeing through the tulips, beginning of sessions, opening nerves, qualifying shooters. We also touch on nice floor guys, calculated shots, big bets, big risks, big payouts, and why Ed and I play so differently. This is something that I was thinking about. How are you feeling? Are you feeling good? Can you keep going? Yeah, I got 30 more minutes. Okay, 30 more minutes. Good. All right. I wanted to talk about, are you ever nervous when you go to play crafts or when you first go to a table? Because I actually still get a little nervous. And this is the subject or topic. The very beginning of any session for me is the most, I'm going to use nerve wracking. It's not like I'm sweating or anything like that, but you know, but it's the one, it's so important getting off to a good start versus getting off to a bad start because it will influence a big chunk of the rest of the session. So I'm very, maybe I have more butterflies in my stomach, but I'm more, I guess I'm more nervous thoughts on the beginning of a session. Why are you nervous? It's so important. Ed, the beginning of a crap session, I think, is the most important time of a session. If we're comparing it to football, the beginning opening quarter, you're trying to put some points on the board, not fumbling it, not throwing a pick six. If it's like chess, taking control of the center of the board, that's so important in the beginning of chess. That's why. To me, it's the most important time of the session. What do you think? Do you even think about that? Not anymore. Oh, nice, dude. Why not? It's just another toss. Yeah, but Ed, if I'm down All right, so look, early. No, but you're not down yet. It's the beginning of the session. Yeah. So you're even. Yeah. So what are you going to bet? You're going to bet 1,200 across. You're going to bet whatever. You're going to bet some big number. Or you're going to bet a reasonable number. Reasonable. Okay. You're betting reasonable on your first toss. Yes. Why mm-hmm. are you betting reasonable? It's not nerve wracking. I feel like no. it's the most. Why are you betting reasonable? It's the most important part no. of the session no. for me because I don't want to get in a hole. I want You're to betting up reasonable. Early. You're betting reasonable. Why? All right. What's your normal bet? Well, that's the thing. It's not my, if, because I'm trying perfect, to get to in a perfect world, the level I want to get to. And we'll, this is what was mentioned. And I'll clarify my statements from last episode in a perfect world. I want the setup, point excluded, 700 across. That's my ideal goal. Right. Are you betting that on your first toss? No. I can't okay. do that right. on my first toss. Right. So my plan is. Yeah. Let's just say you, you just say you drop it all the way to 110. Yeah. It, okay. It will never be at 110. The lowest I would ever possibly be across is going to be 160. I'm talking about inside. Oh, okay. All right. Let's just say you, instead of going whatever the hell you just said okay. a minute ago, you go to 110 inside on your opening throw. Okay. Why are you nervous? If your normal bet is a gazillion, why are you normal? <laughs> why, why, why are you nervous over 110? Yeah. You, you make a good point, but I'm not doing right. that. So like, right, even, even if you're betting 640, that's a that's fucking your, lot. If, if that's your normal love to play number, yeah. but you're opening up much less 110, mm-hmm. You know, maybe a quarter on the four and 10, you know, whatever. Then there's no need to be nervous. Right. Yeah. Yet you're nervous. Because I'm not doing that because I'm still betting a little bigger. And that is one of the dilemmas I'd say, whatever, there should be a name. What are you betting? What are you betting? Well, let's say like at Bellagio, I was coming out maybe a little too heavy. I was betting six and eight, 150 each. So right there, that's 300. Only two numbers. Right. Yeah. What if you made it 90 each? I know. I was actually thinking about that. One of those awkward sizes pays 105. That's not an awkward bet. That's a perfectly normal $90, $90, six and eight. That's a proper bet. That is a proper bet. I like my bets in different chunks, but yes, I could have done that. So maybe. So that's essentially two, 200 bucks. Yeah. You got 
90, 90, 180. Okay, well, even if we did 90 and 90, okay, 180. But you got a $5,000 that you took it out of in the rack. Yeah, but now I don't have a... It's a minuscule number of the 5,000. I guess so. I know so. Do the math. Little bitty fraction of mm -hmm. your total buy-in. You're buying. Mm -hmm. Why are you buying in for five thousand? Ask yourself that. Why am I buying in for five thousand? Because I will put. I'll go five hundred inside. That's why. On your first toss? No, not on my first toss. And okay. that's sort of. So then, why are you freaking nervous over one eighty? Uh, I don't know. I just get nervous. <laughs> I always get nervous. I. I gotta get you to drinking again. <laughs> I would. That's probably why people. Why I would have a drink. With nerves. Nerves are a real thing. They are a real thing. I'm not nervous anymore shooting because I get to go play all the time. But if I didn't play, like remember what when Bo said when we I don't get out? nervous until I'm like twenty five hundred on the four and ten. I mean, that's oh. when I start getting getting, getting kind of antsy. Oh man, that's actually when I start getting excited. That is actually the most thrilling time of my life. All right. So then Here's where you've got, you got a left brain and you got a right brain side working. When? When all the time? Okay. Yeah, for you. Yeah, for you. Okay. We got the left brain, the right brain fighting. If you got 2,500 on the four and 2,500 mm -hmm. on the 10, mm -hmm. then your left brain's doing one thing and your right thing's trying to make that number. Right? Mm -hmm. So your left brain's going, oh, if I hit it, I make $5,000. If I don't hit it, I lose. But your right brain's going at the same time. I need to throw a four or ten. So you gotta take and stay on one side of the brain. You gotta stay on the brain that makes you throw. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ed, so, that makes total sense. That's why I don't think about my bets because I know my bets so well, they're second nature. So I'm not really when I'm at that level, I'm not even thinking, dude. This is so, automatic. But you're nervous. I'm nervous the in the throw. very beginning. I am. I'm nervous about I don't want to go below. I don't want to lose immediately because it changes everything. It changes my approach. And then all of a sudden, two rolls, even if I'm starting at 300 on the six and eight, let's just say points nine and I'm going six, eight and starting at six, eight with one. Well, I'm just going to say 150 each, 300. Yeah. Let's say a horror show happens and shooter, and this is not me shooting. All of a sudden, I'm down 900 bucks. Let's say three shooters. Horrible rolls. They don't hit their, maybe they hit their point. I'm not on it. Either way, I lose, lose, lose. But why, you're if you're nervous, down. if you're nervous and you don't have the dice in your hand, mm -hmm. is that what you're talking about? I'm not necessarily nervous, nervous. It's more. You're over betting on random tossers. I guess so. You can call it over. I guess so. Over betting. I know so. Let's say I, I threw it or two shooters. Let's say you were at the table. Unfortunately, you had like a four roller. I followed it up with a three roller hype man there. Maybe he has a five roller. Either way, we're down. And no matter who, it's Why tough are to you come down? Up. Why are because, you down? Well, depends on the level that I'm betting. I'm going to probably bet a little bigger out of the gate with. Don't do that. With shooters, with any shooters. Qualify everybody. Every I've session. already qualified you, me, and. No, 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 no. Every session. Okay. Every session every table qualify okay so basically assume that everybody before you is going to pso how are you going to bet i don't know dude what so that at your private table you think everyone should and you were leading off you think everyone should have just like qualified you i qualified myself really how'd you do that you you <laughs> tiny tim it tiptoe i tiptoed in what'd you tiptoe tip. in with dude $20, five, $20, nine, uh, $30, six and eight. All right. So maybe the point is I just got a tiptoe in the very beginning, even on myself. But I opened with a nine. I know. And then you, then I threw a nine. I know I've gone through your role on how I would have bet if I was at, like I said, this past episode, if I was already at my sweet spot, a level, like I would have cleared a few thousand, 2,500, at least on your hits. Kudos to justice. Jen. For logging everybody's roles. Yep. But Ed, I think a lot of people. So you you've got to us. You you don't you don't want to over bet, dude. You want to qualify yourself. You're on a different table. You're on a different session. You haven't had the dice in your hands for two hours. Whatever it is, 
you've walked to O'Shea's and back. You went to O'Shea's. It was crowded. Then you end up at the Paris, which is a pretty good hike there and back. You know, you had to cross the highway with a bunch of crazy drivers or whatever. I had to dodge some ladies of the evening. You got you to gotta go through Hooker's Row. You got all that problem, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Take it easy on the first one. I've got to take it easy, easy, like super easy, I think. Take it, take it super easy. And you can press. Get your money off the table. Press like, press like a maniac. I think the irony is that I have absolutely no issues when I've got my setup. There's no questions. I, I, I do think for me personally, I don't get nervous at all when I have a, a shit ton of money out on the table. In fact, it's like I feel like I'm in a, just a comfort zone. I'm more apprehensive in the very beginning of every session because I'm, I hate playing from behind. And then it dictates my entire session. And maybe you're setting yourself, you're setting yourself up to be behind by worrying about being behind. Oh, I don't know if it's worry. Ed, these are like, you can't blame me. These are very almost, I don't know lower what the word bets. is. Lower reasonable fears. Your, lower your bets. Okay. So I'm going to have to tiptoe in. Of course. My I mean, goal. I Ed, can't tell you how many times I bet five, six, and eight field in a come bet. First row, first roll out. Set a point, five, six, eight, fill bet, come bet. God, give me a nine, please. <laughs> you know, that's tiptoeing in. Yeah. So at what point after you've tiptoed, do you get to, what would be your level of bets out on a table that you're like, this is my ideal setup? Would you be across X amount? Like if you, if I had to just put you at a table, say, Ed, you get to start with your most ideal setup across. What would that I mean, be? No, I'm not going to start out across. But let's just say, what would you work up to to ideally have it? But if I'm going to start out across, I'm going to start out $96 okay. on a $15 table. Okay. If it's a $25 table, I'm probably either going to, I'm either going to decide if I'm going to shoot for even numbers, four, six, eight, and 10. I'm going to bet four numbers. Mm-hmm. Four, fours and tens, I always bet, bet in pairs. Uh, or am I going to go inside? And then, but I'm going to read that first toss. You get one mulligan. That's your first toss. Yeah. The come out toss is your only mulligan. Did I get what I expected with that set? Did I get a single pitch with that set? Or did I get a double pitch with that set? Mm. And that toss. And, it, and was that toss my normal toss? Or did I screw it up? Right. Yeah. Did I make my normal, regular toss? Did I hit my landing zone or did I goof it? If I goofed it, I don't have a lot of information to work with. Right. If everything was as normal, then I got information to work with. Yeah. Going back to last, going back to last episode, if I'm throwing the six, five, five, six, and I didn't hit a horn number, but I threw a hard 10. I got information right off the bat. I got a single pitch, hard 10. Mm -hmm. So now I'm okay. I'm going to go. Looks like I might be single pitching, which is my normal. What's a good single pitch set for me to use to try to bang out some numbers real quick, get my money off the table. And then I don't care after that. If I've got my money off the table, what's my win goal? Off this hand, off the hand, not the session, off the hand. If my win goal is 96 across to 200, what have I got to do to get to 200? Press two times and regress, shoot for the moon. What am I going to do? You got to make that decision in game. Mm. In game decision, like a QB, like a good QB. But I don't regress. I don't, I don't regress fours and tens. I've already told you that. Yeah. Ever. I do. I know you do, but I don't because I, I don't madly press them like you do. We're operating on the same. We have the same uh, goal because we are want to get our money back. And that's one of the reasons. Well, not necessarily we have the same goals because I just want to take chunks all the time. I want to put yeah, all but, you know, things in my basket. If I got $35 on the, on the four and 10, you're probably going to start out with a hundred or 200. No, but not necessarily. 
the lowest I will go, and maybe I'm thinking about going lower, but the lowest I'd go with $50 on a four and 10. All right. So you're going to 50 first hit. You're going to what? 10, four, good buddy. How do you forget? 10, four, good buddy on the first I'm just, hit. I'm just asking. And now the four and 10 are a hundred. Okay. So I'm not pressing both. Yeah. What are you doing? Which one did I hit? Oh, let's say you hit the 10. And I, and I had what, what, what did I have on it? I don't know. Let's say you had, oh, what, what would you do with 50 bucks on there? If I had 50 on it, I'd go to a hundred, put 50 in the rack. I got my money back off that number. Classic. Oh, off that number. That number. I'm not pressing the other number. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, or, you got, or you got two, you really, you've only got two choices as far as I'm concerned. Well, I think you have more than that. Yeah, you do. You, you do, but I don't. What are they? Press the number that hit and get your money back off that number. Got it. Or same bet, which pays for two numbers. Dave Garland. Yeah. Or Dave Garland or power press it up. No, not it's just too early to power press. Okay. On the four and 10. You want to know how I would run? I was thinking about this. But you're nervous. I'm always nervous in the very beginning of a session. It doesn't matter. Even if I lose, when I dip below, my strategies have now just changed more or they've been altered. The minute I'm below my starting stack, I kind of talk like it's poker. As when I say starting stack, when I'm below that, now everything's changed. Now my only goal in the world is to get back to even. That's how my brain thinks. I'm constantly, man, you would love looking at how I keep my chips in my rack. Dude, it is meticulous. You would not like mine. It is meticulous, man. If I'm shooting, you would never like mine. <laughs> is it just a, just a mess? Just like a pig pen? Pick them up, set them down, give me the dice. I don't care what they look like. Greens, reds, blacks, and yellows, whatever they, whatever they are, just throw them in here. Let me throw them in this room. Give me the dice. Give me the dice. Give me the dice. There are, there is plenty of time to organize your rack when the next person gets the dice. I agree with you. There is. I'm just, maybe that's one of like, maybe a nervous habit or just a, it's a tick of mine. I'm always looking at that. Not if I'm necessarily up, it's more so when I'm in that danger zone, I'm telling you, man, that is a danger zone. It's not a bad thing that I'm worried I'm having, about that. I'm having movie flashbacks when you say danger zone. <laughs> what? What movie? Uh, Will Robinson? You know <laughs> no, no, <laughs> what, no, no, no. What danger zone? What? I'm thinking Maverick. Yeah. Take I, me to the danger <laughs> zone. I don't know if I would be the Tom Cruise of craps. No, I like Val Kilmer, dude. I like Val Kilmer in that movie. Oh, I like Val Kilmer a lot. You ever see that movie? He, you didn't see that. Oh, you know what old Bay Crap said? He was very disappointed that you didn't get any of those mafia godfather names or references. I know he said that. I was, eh, I don't blame you, man. You're, you're a Alabama. <laughs> you don't maybe have the affinity. Y'all are assuming that I've actually watched those movies. Yeah, you should watch them, man. You should watch them. They're good movies. You should watch Heat too, which is a great movie. I'd rather watch oh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas or something. I've never even seen that movie. See, uh, you're, you're missing yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. So you're missing have, out. Listen, dude. All right. So, and that'll be very, very interesting when we go play. Hopefully, I can get up early to a good. Because I'm going to buy in with what? You're going to buy in. Oh man, are you really going to buy it with 620? And then I'm going to walk away with 3000. You're going to buy in with 5000 5, and you're going to walk away with 6000. I hope so. And so I'm going to have beat your ass by percentage. Yeah, you you well definitely you're a king of that. But it all depends, man. It all depends because some of those bigger bets that I'm going to place might come in. They might. I hope they do. I hope you, I, I hope, I, I hope, I hope you make a freaking killing. So I hope you make a lot of money too. I just hope we both make money, but why do I go there? Why do I play? You are playing to make money. That's the only reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm aware of that. I think you have mentioned that you brought that up. There is only one reason to play this game. If you don't, if you play this game for any other reason, you might as well just hand the casino your money at the cage and say goodbye. Here, take it. Here, yeah, just give it to him. Yeah, Save like yourself to, the trouble. Here, here's my card and here's my wallet.
Yeah. <laughs> Talk if to you're you. not there to win. <laughs> yeah. And don't go or just give them your money when you walk in the door. Hand it to the guard. He'll appreciate it. I was thinking about how I would, uh, you know, you said something. I thought back to it today. You were saying, I was like, yeah, we should do some beginner videos. I did not. I did not say that. You <laughs> no, said I, that. I said that. But you're I like, resisted yeah, that's, that. The point is, is that I was thinking if you're a beginner or let's say newbie to craps, you should be able to follow. Let's say if we're talking about betting across, let's say 160, Ed, let's say we're going to go across 160. If I was going to train people on my system or how to play, I would start them at 160 across, which would be 25 on the 4, 10, 25 on the 5, 9, 30 on the 6 and 8, 160, right? Yeah. I think a beginning player, like I think we take it for granted, but when we're talking a beginning player who's maybe been playing for six months should be able to follow what we're doing in these progressions. Like they should know 25, four and 10 pays 50, 25, five and nine pays 35, a 36 and eight pays 35. When we're going back to what we just got done, these last two episodes about practice, 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 these are things that they should be practicing all the time. They should know. They should be practicing their betting progressions at all times. Whatever betting progression that you are comfortable starting with that you've decided yeah. to set on. And we went over this, but even just not seeing a video of this, but doing it in your head, you should just know these things. Like I thought about how I would run for a beginner. Like if I was going to take them under my wing, like little, like if I went out with Jaybird. Come on, grasshopper. We're going to start. Come on, grasshopper. 160 the... across. That's a lot. Is that a lot? It's too much. It's too much. 160 across. That's Is that really Is that really a lot? Why are you betting across? Just using it as, as an example. I mean, Ed, 160 across. I mean, yeah, I guess so. It might be. All right. See, you and I play so differently. Go and on. I can't stress. I cannot stress enough how much differently. That's what makes this I, podcast good. I mean, you and I play nothing alike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, right. absolutely freaking nothing alike. That is alike. amazing. How are we even talking? Because is... I'm not even going to bet that on somebody I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to recommend that to a brand new person to bet that on somebody that they've got no idea who that is throwing the dice. What, You've if, got it's, a... what if it's someone that we do know, like, let's say we're at a table. And you Wisco. still got to qualify them. Okay. Let's say we've qualified them. You qualify everybody, including yourself. And if yes. you don't, you're screwing up. Uh, okay. I agree with you. Then you why are you telling them to bet that much across? I'm just saying, theoretically, we're starting. Let's say we've qualified this. No, I'm never theoretically starting there. The, okay. The qualification, the Olympic trials have have been already conducted they've been qualified all right so we're in paris and we've got the craps yeah we're in paris paris we're in paris, paris across the street we got the paris. we got the craps olympics going yep. on yep and you're qualified i am not betting that across why because i know anybody can pso anybody i know anyone and can. if you dig into that hole it's hard to dig out i know ed so that's a good question. How you dig why out? Would I put it? myself in a position to be in that big a hole. What if you're up? Let's just say you're up. No, 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 no. You didn't say what if I'm up. You said I'm walking up and I'm teaching somebody brand new how to play the game. Okay. All right. But if, if I am up, mm -hmm. why would I take the chance of giving the damn money back to the casino? This is gambling. No, that's stupid. I don't know. Is it really? If yeah, you're up, if it you're... is stupid. It's stupid. Ed, if I'm up. If I'm up, it's my money. I don't want to give it back. If I'm up. I want to make more. I do want to make more. Don't get me wrong. Okay. So are you going to tiptoe in on every shooter and you're up? I mean, I think that would, I, I'm not. I'm going to probably bet the dark side on 98% of the people at the table. Okay. Let's say you're up. If I'm up $10,000, oh, you know what? Okay. I'm still going to bet. I'm going to bet the dark side. Okay. You're up and, and someone, you know that you've qualified that you know is a good shooter i'm going to start out inside table minimum you are really going to start like that wow okay well hey you know what god bless you ed 
I am not going to do that. If I'm up that much money, we are different. And that's the thing. If I'm up that much money, we are totally money, different. Because I'm going to go. I've been doing this for 35 freaking years, yeah. and I know what they're going to do. As soon as I put $640 out there, they're going to throw a seven. Hey, and then you're going to be like, "Fuck." Okay, yeah, you should have been. So you're going to tiptoe through the tulips on every shooter, even if you said it's gambling. Mm -hmm. It is. So if you're going, you want to gamble? Go play roulette. That's one. That's one of the games in there. Okay, you can't you can tiptoe in roulette, I guess. You can play you can play red or black, but you still got two greens thrown in there, sometimes three now. Ed, this is a great example from what happened at Paris. Remember when I said I got up early? Mm, and you okay. stayed. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what happened when I got up early. I am gonna take calculated shots. And because I still think at this game. Bigger bets, bigger payouts. You can get in and get out quicker, and that's a lot of how. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mister. I stayed too long. Too okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, wait, that, a wait a minute. A, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, asterisk that, Ed. Asterisk that. Because okay. right, you've already admitted that you stayed too long twice. Yeah. So too, don't too, say I get in, get out. You too can't long. Say that. Too you long. Cannot I, say that. I agree with you. You are correct, sir. That was a learning thing, but that was 10 minutes. Okay. Get in, get Ten out. Minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yes. And it combined well, more what of What happened social... in 10 minutes? Yeah. Up. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> no, what happened in 10 minutes? We've already acknowledged that, but Ed, it might happen with you. And then I'm going to do the Irish of goodbye. It could. I'll be like the Irish goodbye. It'll be like, Ed, I got to go use the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, 40 minutes later, you're going to be COVID. like. I miss COVID. I miss COVID. That was the perfect excuse. I need to go wash my hands. You're going to be like, where'd Ten Ton go? And then you're going to realize, or maybe I will have said Kobayashi. All right. Kobayashi, dude. Yeah. That would have been the See you, Con. And then you See would have been like, okay. I'll be going. Sayonara. Okay, Con. Yeah, that's what you have to say. Kobayashi and then Sayonara. And then all it's right. all good. You can't get mad at the other person then. That's part of the rule. No, no, no. You cannot get mad because somebody colors up. Okay, Going back without you reprimanding me, I'm up. It's hard not to do. I'm up a thousand bucks early at Caesars. This yeah. is what I did because I'm looking at that going, you know what? Now I got some bullets. I'm going to take mm -hmm. some shots and I'm going to go for the fucking payday right now. Okay. It didn't turn out that way, but yes, all of a sudden now. It could have, but it could have. But that's what you have to have a little bit of that in you. And I was up and now I'm going to use this like a poker player would use their stack to bully someone else. Now I come out with 500 inside because this lady I had qual all she was was throwing box numbers. All she was was throwing box numbers. I'd seen her roll twice. I'm like, okay, good enough. Now I'm up. Now I'm going to take a shot. Guess what? It happens. Short roll done. And then I was up, I shot, I hit my point, but guess what? I still ended up lo losing money. I bet big because I had the ammo. Now I'm even, I can live with that. Did you walk away even that night? I I walked away down 225 okay. bucks, $225 on a $5,000 after two and a half hours of play. That's close to even that's really close. To yeah. Even. With an average bet way through the roof. Oh, by the way, dude, the floor who I met that night was so nice that when I came back the next night, I walked up to one of those tables. Isn't it cool when the floor is like, gives you this, no, don't come near this table. Like, yeah, it's great when they do that when, because they're just like, this table, do not play at this table because you don't, you don't, you don't want to be here, dude. <laughs> but that's really nice when floor guys do that. And they're going to do that to people that they like and that you get along with yeah, because they're going to yeah. give you the heads up. And you were taking care of the crew, no doubt. Of course. So, dude, that's what I mean. Do you see anything wrong with what I just said about I had the ammo, I didn't walk, but I was going to take a shot. Why not? I'm not going to just always tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. I'm going to take a bigger shot when I, when I can. Is there anything wrong with that? You and I bet nothing alike. I know. I mean, we bet nothing alike. I know. I have no faith in my fellow human being to be able to throw more than three numbers. You're a curmudgeon. 
But maybe I am you're a, a pragmatist. You've got to prove to me. You've got to prove to me that I shouldn't be betting against you. Well, listen, man, would you bet against? And I know pretty quick. Would you bet against Pappy Van Winkle? Never. Okay. But I would never bet heavy on him either. Does he have to prove it to you right then and there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Every, every time. Every we time. learned something, Ed. And I think what you're saying is is pretty important. I really do. I actually agree with you. I think that this is one of those drops of wisdom, dude. Pearls of knowledge right now. It's just one of those, you got to dig 300 feet deep to get a drop. To get yeah. a drop of wisdom thing. Yeah, th because I do agree with you. And that is the smart thing. But can you also understand that I do have a little gamble? For in example. Me? All right. Here's an example. I play with 220 inside. That's his handle for all those that don't know. 220 inside. That's solid. But he's got a, a real last name, which it would make a cool handle anyway as well. It would. but His God-given yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. But, all right. So I play with him a lot. He just was in Biloxi this weekend, actually. I saw a picture of him. And I've played with him enough to know. I mean, yes. he, he's got that inside handle, 220 inside, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's playing for. Yes. But I also know that he's more likely to throw a four with his sets than he is a five. Okay. So what do you think I do? First hit inside, I placed the four. And so I'm already a step ahead of the shooter because I know he, he takes it as a, uh, an off thing. Okay. I threw a four, whatever. Right. But I know he's going to, he's good for one or two fours at least. Yeah. So you're stepping out a little, which is what you're saying. Well, I just, I know the shooter. Yeah. And I know what he normally throws and I know what normally happens. I've watched him enough yeah. to know that with certain sets, his inside sets, he's probably going to pop off a four or two while he's trying to hit those inside numbers. I've, I will be a press ahead of him on the four or 10 or a place bet and a, and a press ahead of him on the four before he actually gets on it himself. I'm impressed that yeah, I'm impressed that you do that actually. Cause I kind of do that with people all the time. I know what they shoot. I know what they throw. You play with a certain person enough, you know what's normal, even if they don't recognize what's normal. Listen, man, I play with them for a half hour, hour, and I'm going to pull those same rabbits out of my hat because I feel like that's part of paying attention. If people, that's why sometimes I'll work certain numbers on people, and then people will think I'm a genius. No, my friend that lives in Tupelo. He best Dude. Tupelo, man. Uncle Tupelo. Yeah, there was a band called that. That's cool. I like it. There, was a, there was a band called Uncle Tupelo? <laughs> yep. That's where Elvis was born. I didn't know that. Oh, he was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. I didn't know that. That's and cool. And raised there. Yeah. He wasn't. That Memphis was where he moved to. I've been to Graceland. I have too. Nice. Did you go to the, what did you think about the Jungle Room? I don't know. I don't remember, man. I don't. Yeah, remember you were that. wasted. You were I, wasted. I was not there. No, I was there when I was on tour. Ed, is there anything wrong? I want your answer on this. Is there anything wrong with what I did with that thousand dollars on two shooters and going? I can now bet bigger and go for a, like a knockout punch. I I feel like there's an opening now that has been provided to me, and I can hit it like if it was a decent role and I was able to start at a bigger level, my payouts would have been bigger. I would have had more money taking that shot. Do you think there's anything wrong with that? Let me ask you a question. A couple of questions first, because I wasn't there. A full length extended version of this podcast is available exclusively on our Patreon page. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and we'll tell all of your fellow craps playing friends about it. Please follow Casino Tears on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you like the show, please rate it five stars and leave a review. The best and most fun way to contact us would be to call and leave a message on our official Casino Tears vent line, 229-NO7. You can also email us at no7 at casinotears.com. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. And lastly, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash casinotears.
On behalf of Roll to Win Craps from Alabama and 10 Ton is number one from Las Vegas, thanks for listening.